Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, whenever you talk about a king, whenever you talk about someone possibly beating the king, you're viewed as a loon. You're viewed as someone who is just trying to be controversial, right? If I were to go back in history and if I were to say, you know, I think this fighter, Cassius Clay, is going to beat Big Bad Sonny Liston because he has too much speed, too much head movement, too much ring presence, right? Too many skills is better from the outside, can offset, you know, Liston's power by forcing Liston to try to come find him, by forcing Liston to move his feet. I would have been viewed as a crackpot in the early 1960s. Liston, of course, was a big favorite in that fight, right? Heavyweight history is replete with situations like that, even when it involves a superstar opponent, right? Many of us now consider Muhammad Ali to have been one of the best heavyweights to ever walk the planet. I would argue that the Ali who beat Cleveland Williams might have been the very top of the heavyweight division. Now let's talk about Tyson Fury and let's talk about the King. Vladimir Klitschko, right? I'm only talking for myself here, but when that fight happens, assuming Klitschko gets by Brian Jennings, which is not a done deal. When Klitschko fights Fury, I'll be taking Tyson Fury in that match. In my opinion, Tyson Fury is on his A-game, the best heavyweight on the planet right now, right? That doesn't mean he's the champion, right? To be champion, you have to win title fights. Vladimir Klitschko has done the work. Vladimir Klitschko has the more decorated career than Tyson Fury. What Vladimir Klitschko doesn't have is... Tyson Fury's ceiling, right? Tyson Fury has a higher ceiling than Vladimir Klitschko, right? It's like comparing buildings and architecture. You can be in a great looking building and you say, wow, this building is very well built. This is a world-class building. Then you go in a skyscraper and then you're on the top floor of the skyscraper and you're looking around and you realize this is a whole new dimension right I believe Tyson Fury has a skill set that vastly exceeds vastly is the word I've used vastly exceeds Vladimir Klitschko's skill set I do consider Vladimir Klitschko to be a boxing Hall of Famer Lord knows he's been heavyweight champion for a very long time Lord knows he has a long list of victims let's talk about his game here let's boldly go wherever the film takes us. Right, Spock, you remember. Vladimir Klitschko's A game is A+. Plus, right? He's physically dominant. He's tall. He's big for a heavyweight. Right? Not a lot of fat on him. He has size. He's always in shape. He's shooting one of the heavyweight division's best jabs. Right? In my opinion, his plan A is to soften you up with his left jab and then to come across the top with a big overhand right. He has ring coverage. He can hit you from halfway across the ring. Right? That's his plan A. Jab, straight right. Up top, doesn't go to the body that much. His plan B, if you're able to duck the jab or have him uncertain about whether he can land his jab on you, 
His plan B is to hit you with a left hook. He can throw that left hook short. It's a great punch. It's one of boxing's best punches. Took out Eddie Chambers, took out Kubrat Pulev, right? He has one punch KO power, right? His plan B consists of a left hook. If he misses the left hook, he clinches you, right? He doesn't want you hitting him in the body. He doesn't want you getting inside of his zone. He doesn't want you too close to him. So he'll clinch you, right? What does all of this mean? It means that Vladimir Klitschko is not great to the body. He'll throw an occasional body punch, but he doesn't concentrate on trying to take out your ribcage. Vladimir Klitschko fights in second gear. Second and third gear. He's even keel. Right? He's not a guy who's going to suddenly come out and try to empty the tank. Those situations are rare. They happen the second Tony Thompson fight. But more than likely, a Vladimir Klitschko KO is going to come, right, while he's cruising, not really exerting himself that much. Right? So, the Calvin Brock fight. Two guys are looking at each other. Klitschko throws a 1-2. Right? Calvin Bro Brock badly hurt. The world changes. The first Tony Thompson fight. Two guys are looking at each other. Thompson, in my opinion, was doing awfully well in that fight. Those, you know, the first two-thirds of that fight, in my opinion, rank among the most compelling video of Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Of course, Vladimir Klitschko then, without a lot of wasted motion, without a lot of energy, is able to land a right hand on Tony Thompson that fight is over, right? You're not going to see Klitschko jump in on an opponent like David Hay jumped on Enzo Macarinelli, right? Klitschko's not the kind of guy who throws caution to the wind, right? Except for the Tony Thompson rematch. And that was against an opponent who Klitschko had gone several rounds against, right? Klitschko trust his technique. It's a jab heavy Emmanuel Stewart technique. Right? He wants to go second and third gear. Right? He knows that when he tries to go fourth gear, sometimes he overheats. I encourage everyone watching this video to look at the first Lehman Brewster fight where Klitschko looks like he has a panic attack in the ring. At one point in that fight, he falls face first, right? You look at him and you realize the way he's built, things need to be structured. He's working within a system. He likes to go at a certain rate. He's like a machine. He's not his brother, Vitaly, who sometimes would drop his hands and trust his instincts. No, Vladimir likes to be prepared. Vladimir likes a construct. He doesn't want to deviate from that construct. So when you get inside, Vladimir is going to tie you up. Right? He's not going to, on the spot, make a decision that, hey, this is open that's open. Let me push my luck. Let me change my defense. Right? Let me turn this way. Let me turn that way and make it work. He's not, nor has he ever been, James Tony, one of the more important fighters of the last 20 years. Right? Let me say this too. He doesn't have a great chin. Right? He's been dropped in fights. When you look at his record, understand he has wins against people like Sam Peter in fights in which he hit the canvas multiple times, right? You know in the Lehman Brewster fight, the first one, that there is no way he would have survived the second half of that fight 
had it continued. In other words, as long as he's pristine, as long as his A game is humming along, he's good, he's fine. But when there is trouble, he could fall apart, right? A physical guy who can push the issue, not slow moving Sam Peter, but someone who's going to drop him and then raise the room temperature, right? Jump on him, get inside on him, break his construct, can break him. Now let's talk about why, in my opinion, someone who might be able to do that is Tyson Fury. Right? Let me say this. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, when he first came around, big heavyweights like him were rare. Right? I remember I looked at Lennox Lewis when he was younger and I thought, my God, this dude is big. Now don't get me wrong, there have been big heavyweights before, right? George Foreman, his nickname was Big George Foreman. But understand, historically speaking, Vladimir Klitschko is huge for a heavyweight, right? He's big, he's sticking a jab, he's leaning back. Just the lengths would give most heavyweights, especially those who can't duck under a jab and who don't have quickness and can't work angles, all kinds of problems right so a lot of the advantage Vladimir Klitschko has in the ring comes from his size I would argue earlier in his career his size was a decided advantage for him he doesn't have that on Tyson Fury Tyson Fury's taller than Vladimir Klitschko right you know Vladimir Klitschko's reach isn't a decided advantage on Tyson Fury. Now let's say Klitschko is cruising in second and third gear trying to bank rounds, right? You know, behind a jab from the outside. I would argue that from the outside, Tyson Fury is the more skilled fighter. Right? Understand, Tyson Fury has his own jab that he can pepper you from outside. Look at how he batters. Derek Chisora. Right? More importantly, Tyson Fury, who's taller than Klitschko. In other words, Klitschko's not jabbing down on a guy. Klitschko has to deal with a guy who's tall. That jab's going to have to be straight or up. Understand that Tyson Fury like Terence Crawford, is ambidextrous, right? Not just in punching. I'm talking about his entire construct. He can switch his stance. He's adept from the left side. In other words, all the good things, all the good things that Tony Thompson brought to his first match against Vladimir Klitschko that gave Klitschko so many trouble, uh, so much trouble that his cornerman, Emmanuel Stewart's telling him, look, you got to do something, right? All of those attributes, long jab, left-handed stance, height, the ability to deal with Klitschko from distance, right? All of that. Tyson Fury has. More importantly, Tony Thompson knows this. He entered that Klitschko fight with a leg injury. Right? The Tony Thompson who gave Klitschko all kinds of problems in one of Klitschko's more challenging fights doesn't have the movement, the foot speed that Tyson Fury has right now. In other words, Tyson Fury would be better than Tony Thompson was in the fight in which Tony Thompson gave Vladimir Klitschko all kinds of problems. Right? Let's talk about the rematch. The Tony Thompson rematch. Because I think this is the Rosetta Stone.
Thompson comes out and looks good in the first round of that rematch. Then what happens is for one of the rare times in his career, and it's rare, Vladimir Klitschko drops his construct. And Vladimir Klitschko starts going like this to try to get Tony into a shootout with him. Right? You can't do that against Tyson Fury because while Fury's competitive with Klitschko from the outside Fury has a decided advantage on Klitschko on the inside if Klitschko opens up his construct and Fury takes a step forward he's gonna find Klitschko unable to defend himself wide open right wide open understand you can't clinch Fury the way Klitschko clinched Povetkin. That fight, it's a height fight. Klitschko is tucking Povetkin under his shoulder. Good luck trying to do that in any kind of sustained way against the taller Tyson Fury. The Christian Hammer fight, there are moments in that fight where the two guys get together. This is who Fury is right they clinch while they clinch fury leans over hammer and is hitting him in the kidneys fury's keeping his hands going he's vastly superior much more skilled than vladimir klitschko on the inside also fury's interesting because fury can fight small in other words, Fury can get on the inside. He has that rear skill where he can put a shoulder on you, tuck his head, know that he has his head, defend it, and then work your body. In other words, from a skill, <laughs> from a skill perspective, outside, where Klitsch goes dangerous, right? He hits guys who don't realize that his power can carry halfway across the ring. Outside, Fury can go lefty, change the angles on Klitschko, move better than most of Klitschko's opponents, neutralize Klitschko's jab, while hitting Klitschko with his own right jab. Right? I think Klitschko's going to have a problem even boxing Fury. Right? Klitschko's going to find out that his straight right hand doesn't line up that well with what Fury is doing. Fury doesn't have to get that close to Klitschko. You want to see a Fury fight against a guy with a pretty good jab, one of the division's better jabs, where Fury makes the guy's jab a non-entity. Look at the Fury Kevin Kingpin Johnson fight. Right? Fury's outside, he's moving around, he's changing, righty, lefty, right? You'll notice the one constant is Johnson's unable to land his jab with any regularity in the fight. You take away Vladimir Klitschko's jab, and Vlad's going to be in, pro in, in trouble. Let me say this too, you saw the Vladimir klitschko kubrat Pulev fight. Klitschko has a great left hand. He can now throw that left hand without touching you with a jab first, right? He has the timing down where he can lead with power shots, right? This Klitschko's better than Klitschko's ever been, right? My point to you, though, is there's never a moment in that fight, the kubrat Pulev fight, where Pulev gets inside in such a way that Klitschko would have to significantly shorten his punches. Right? Because Pulev himself doesn't have an inside game. You know what? Tyson Fury does. Tyson Fury can come and lean on you inside. If he comes and leans on Vladimir Klitschko and Klitschko can't clinch him, what's Klitschko's offense going to be? Right? Think about it. You know, because we know Fury can operate inside. We saw that in the first Derek Chisora fight. Isn't there a moment in that fight where Chisora gets 
Fury up on the ropes and Fury's actually winning the round with his back up against the ropes with, you know, Derek Chisora trying to hunt him down. What happens if Fury decides, you know what, Klitschko's power is long power, right? That straight right hand requires space, doesn't it? That jab requires space, doesn't it? He can shorten up that left hook, I'll agree with that, right? Look at the Ray Austin fight. He can shorten up that left hook, but can't you defend against that left hook and get inside of it? If you get inside of Vladimir Klitschko's left hook, what's he going to do? Let me say this too, I'll agree. When you're as tall as Tyson Fury is, you have a lot of body to hit. Right? That's the nature of being tall, right? You're tall, you have more of everything to hit, right? Okay, great. Name me the fight where Vladimir Klitschko fights small and starts taking out a guy's ribcage. YouTube Nation, does that fight exist? I encourage you to list any such fight in the comment section to this video. Let me close by saying this. You know, when it comes to the NBA, I'm a Knicks fan, right? I know what it's like to miss the playoffs on an ongoing basis, right? Now, I'll go out and I, I talk with young guys about basketball all the time. And I keep hearing about how great LeBron is. And folks want to compare LeBron to Michael Jordan, right? And, you know, LeBron has a series of great numbers, but the bottom line is this, right? LeBron doesn't touch Jordan at his best. Understand, Jordan at his best is not only a better athlete than LeBron, is not only more creative than LeBron, but he was a shutdown defender. Folks, Jordan won Defender of the Year one year in the NBA, right? Jordan shut down guys like Latrell Sprewell, legendary, you know, legendary shutdowns right the bottom line is you know maybe over time someone can make an argument that hey LeBron is consistently excellent etc but we know the top end is is a different ball of wax entirely right Kobe in his prime at his best his best games are better than LeBron's best games Right, Kobe could touch Michael Jordan when Kobe's at his best. Right, not LeBron. Understand a ceiling doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, Tyson Fury is just innately superior to every aspect of Vladimir Klitschko. But what a ceiling does mean, and you see it in track and field is that when Usain Bolt shows up on his A game, he's going to beat Carl Lewis, right? Now, let me say this. I don't want to get too provocative. But Tyson Fury, by his own admission, has had emotional mood swings. At the end of his fight against Christian Hammer, it was a bit shocking. It looked like it surprised his corner. <laughs> but Fury grabbed the mic. And I'm not kidding. He started singing. Right? I mean, he was all in. It was like Tom Jones singing. He was all in. He started singing to the crowd. Right? He was obviously on a high. You need to pay attention to a fighter's mood swings. What's happening in his life? I'm telling you some great fighters. Ray Leonard. Right now, openly admit, and Ray had a lot of turmoil in his life, openly admit that he went into some fights emotionally flat. He knew, walking into the ring for his first fight against Roberto Duran, that he was emotionally flat. My point to you is simply this. Pay close attention to what's happening in Tyson Fury's life in the days before his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. The Tyson Fury who showed up yesterday to fight Christian Hammer, the Fury who's confident, who's singing, 
who's passionate, right? That Tyson Fury beats Vladimir Klitschko. That's the Fury I'm going to bet on. But if you hear that Tyson Fury has any kind of real life drama happen to him, right? Family trouble, um, things like that, right? If he's upset about anything, then proceed with caution because understand this is a guy with mood swings. My point is this. Tyson Fury's A-game, in my opinion, beats Vladimir Klitschko's A-game. Right? I've looked at a lot of heavyweights over a lot of years. And I'm just here to tell you that this guy has it. Right? Overlook this guy at your own peril. Just like the public overlooked Ali before he fought Liston. Right? It was laughable to think that Cassius Clay had a chance against Big Bad Sonny Liston. Then you notice when the two guys come to the middle of the ring, Cassius Clay is actually bigger than Sonny Liston. Just, by the way, as Tyson Fury is bigger than Vladimir Klitschko. Then the fight starts and you actually notice the guys have a different rhythm. Right? Both guys have great jabs. Don't sleep on Sonny Liston's jab. But Sonny Liston's plodding around the ring like this. Ali by contrast, can drop his hands and is floating around the ring, right? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He's floating around the ring. And early in that fight, once you see the hand speed, you start to think to yourself, whoa, whoa, what exactly is it that Ali is lacking that has him as an underdog in this fight? How could he have ever been an underdog in this fight? I believe you're going to find out the same thing about Tyson Fury. I think this guy is brilliant operating in broad daylight. Let me tell you, the last few Fury fights I've seen, they're not even competitive. Right? They're not. They're not even competitive. You wouldn't even guess that the guy he's fighting has any talent whatsoever. Right? He's fighting Derek Chisora, a guy who goes the distance with Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Let's face it, we know Derek Chisora beat Robert Hellenius. I don't care what the scorecard said. Right? Derek Chisora looks like an amateur against Tyson Fury. Right? Fury's beating guys by a wide margin. Then you look at him, you see the size, you see the skills. You see he's fluent. He doesn't even look like he's on an off leg when he switches to southpaw. It's fluid. You notice he can pump a jab, then he comes inside and then, incredibly, the other guy's trying to clinch him because he's superior inside. You notice he's comfortable from distance, shooting a jab from halfway across the ring. He's also able to shorten his punches up close and he can lean on you. I encourage everyone here to Google Nassim Richardson's comments following his victory over Steve Cunningham. Right? Cunningham's one of the better athletes out there in boxing. Moves well. Right? If, if boxing were a decathlon, I would expect Cunningham to finish in the top five. He is one of the better athletes. Right? You know the rest. Tyson Fury, after getting dropped, gets off the canvas and decides to smother Steve Cunningham. He literally starts running into Cunningham, just coming forward and leaning on Cunningham, putting his weight on Cunningham, reminding Cunningham, I'm the big man, I'm the real heavyweight in this fight. Nassim Richardson was upset after the fight. He said, hey, all Tyson Fury does is come in and lean on you. He shouldn't have been allowed to come in and maul my guy this way. And yet there are other Tyson Fury fights. The Kevin Johnson fight where he's on his back foot. He's not even inside. He's shooting a jab. And you're saying, wow, I wonder who this guy would be if he has an inside game. Well, what if he has the inside game? I don't even think I'm going out on a limb here. I'm taking Tyson Fury over Vladimir Klitschko. Let's hope that fight gets made. Right? Why? Because I'd like to see the two best heavyweights in the world go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm taking Fury in that fight. If you don't know about Tyson Fury, please look up some films on this guy. He can throw combinations. He can lead with power shots. 
The guy has been in the gym, and I have to tell you, I've been a Tyson Fury fan for a while. The last few Tyson Fury fights, this guy has lifted his game. This is almost like watching Roy Jones in the 1990s, where you knew Roy Jones was good. Then you saw him against Mike McCallum and Virgil Hill. And as I remember, as I was watching the screen, I thought, what the, you know, let's just say Virgil Hill never looked worse in his life. And that's when you realize that Roy Jones, who you knew was talented, was on a different plane had hit a different stage of his career. That's Tyson Fury right now. Pay attention to the mood changes. Right? Keep in mind in boxing, you know, you really can't, if you require mood stabilizers, you really can't take them. Right? You have to, you know, pass drug screening and all this other stuff. Right? Pay attention to the mood swings. But if Tyson Fury comes in ready, if he's happy like he was his last fight, I don't think Vladimir Klitschko beats him. And keep in mind, I'm not a hater on Klitschko. I took Klitschko against Kubrat Pulev. Lord knows I've taken Klitschko in many fights. I would have taken Sonny Liston in many fights. Right? That doesn't mean Liston beats Ali. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.